we're going to start a new series, right? Um, we have been on the prayer for the last uh, uh, month on prayer every Wednesday. The Lord led us to pray every Wednesday. Just shut down the preaching and had us praying. And uh, I enjoy that. I, I like that because I've been on a break on Wednesday, not preaching. but been praying. But he spoke to me the last time that we were in prayer. He said, do people really know who I am? Now, you remember who he told that to, right? Jesus told Peter that. Whom do you say that I am? And the Holy Spirit revealed to him that he is the Lord, the Christ, the anointed one, and his anointed one, right? Hallelujah. And the Lord, you know, you know how you have these communications with the Lord, and he just speaks to you. And I'm not saying you heard, I heard an audible voice, but you could just sense him saying something in my spirit. And I just was talking to him. And I do like to talk out loud. And so I says, Lord, uh, sure. He says, do they really know who I am? And then he started showing me something about the church. He said, if they knew who I was, the church would be busting at the seams. Of course, as a pastor, I took that personal. But he wasn't talking about just the Oasis Center Church. He was talking as a whole, as a whole. Now, the reason why there are some churches busting at the seam, uh, not that they're not teaching the word, but there are people that got revelation of who Christ is. And there are some people that don't know. I mean, listen, if, if you and I come to church simply because it's an obligation, the pastor will call me up Monday. <laughs> or if it's, well, you know, I just feel bad. I haven't been in church in a long time. I better go. You know, those are all the wrong reasons. The reason why we come to the house of the Lord is because, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but that's fine, is, is that he is the Lord. Now notice this, he is the. I'm a pastor, but I'm not the pastor. You are a member of the church, but not the member. Do you see what I'm saying? He is the Lord. And so when he is the Lord, then our whole perspective changes. We, we come to church knowing that we're going to the house of God, not just a church. We're going to the place where the Lord is, not just the pastor or, you know, your favorite Sunday school teacher or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and I believe that's the reason why he was sharing with that. And so I started seeing some, let's, let's come with an open heart and an open mind, right? We, we've been taught the church what the church is. We know the church is the ecclesia, the called out ones. But let's come refreshed, renewed with an open heart this morning to know what is really the church? Uh, what is the church? Uh, what significance does the church have on this earth? What is the significance of the church in the millennial? What's the significance of the church when we're in the New Jerusalem? What is the significance of the church when we're raptured out of here like any time? You see, uh, what is the responsibility that I have in the church while I'm here on earth? You know, when we start looking at that, church no longer becomes a byproduct, now becomes a primary purpose in our walk we're christians we come to the house of the lord to receive from the lord you know my car stays in a garage right and so as long as it's in the garage it, 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 it's it's a car and as long as i run it, it's a car but it, it has nothing to do with my spirituality and so I used the car because I was once was very involved in car stuff. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I remember the, the, the Van Goghs. Anybody remember? I'm probably dating myself, but anybody remember the Van Gogh Dodge Custom Vans? Van Gogh Dodge Custom Vans. It was the thing of the year. Everybody had custom vans. You know what I'm talking about, brother? Hey, hey my brother, sister. We had vans, and it was an awesome. Man, I had a beautiful van. 
I mean, it had some nice decoration on it. Oh, it was beautiful. And there was a park in Houston called Herman Park, which, which was a large park where all the car enthusiasts would be. But the thing that I always remember was Sunday morning was the main focus of the van club. Amen, the van club. And Mama Honey would go to church and I would go to the van club on Sunday morning, right? And open the doors and all the vans. People would come and look at all the vans and, and you'd be there all day long, right? That was my gospel. That was my religion. But until Jesus Christ came into my heart, I found out, wow, wasted Sundays being out in the park. Wasted Sundays. If I would have been in the house of the Lord, I would have not had the problems that I had in my early life or when I first got married, you know. Uh, so, so there's reasons why God calls us, right? Go with me to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and let's look at the word of God and uh, draw your faith with my faith. Draw from the Holy Spirit. You know, I can sense when you draw from the presence of God because that just pulls out from the faith of God. And, and you know, and, and so, so join your faith with me today as we continue this series. Uh, this series has no ending. Uh, as, I, as far as I know, it may go on forever, but it's powerful, right? But I know something. I know something that God is getting the church ready. Whenever God gets the church ready, it's for a purpose. And so he's readying us for a glorious move of God. How many believe that there's going to be an awakening coming to our land, a manifestation, a revival? Oh, I want revivals to come back into the house of God. Mighty moves of God are going to come back. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look out, little building. We're going to have to just go outdoors like we used to be outdoors. Amen. Put up the big tent, guys. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Amen. You remember the 10 days, guys? Anybody remember the 10 days? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Father, today we open our hearts to receive. We open our eyes to see. We open our ears to hear the word of God. And so, Father, we thank you that lead us today. Holy Spirit, lead me with your word today. In Jesus' name, I give you praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 12, the Bible says this. Uh, and uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints. Now, when you see the for the perfecting of the saints, there's always going to be a promise before that for. Now, let's look at it. Verse 10, uh, verse 11, excuse me. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Notice this. It didn't say the God gave us the pastor, the teacher. He says he gave some apostles, some prophets and evangelists and some teachers and, and pastors for the perfecting of the saints. There it is right there. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Boy, there's so much there. There is just so much there. I would say we have not even touched a piece of this. You know how I know? Because if you look back and look at verse 12 again, for the perfecting of the saints. What's that word perfect mean? Uh, mature. Perfect means much more than what you and I think in our vernacular. Perfection means we become people that know who we are in Christ. Right? So in other words, we, come, we have a long way to go, church. I was reading a, a statistics that they sent me last week, or no, excuse me, this week, that the church in America is declining. How many people can attest to that? Can agree to that, to see that's happening. Um, it said that in 2017, it would literally decline unless something happens to a percentage of even 40%. And that's not far away. And then it says, by the time our children, children enter church, if the Lord tarries, only a very small percentage of 5% will be going to church. Do you see the decline? In other words, there's a decline happening. Uh, why is the decline happening? Uh, is it because the church is boring? 
Why is the decline happening? Because they're not meeting the need of the people. Why is it declining? Well, I can answer one thing. The reason why it's declining is because the interest of the Word of God is no longer in, of interest to people. Give you a good example. How many of you, will, and please, please, this is a time to reflect on what God is telling us. I'm not, I'm, you know, although I know everyone, but I don't know what you do behind your closed doors. But, you know, the, the, the key to know this is do we spend time in the Word more than we would anything else? That's, that's the barometer to go by. How, what is your Word time? Now, now I'm think, I have to examine myself too. What is my word time? My word time is to prepare a message. No, my word time should be getting up in the morning. The first thing is to open up Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram or the television is to get my iPad and go into the word. That's the first thing I ought to do. Because see, there is where, therein is where life is, the word. Now, you know, we're going to be honest, right? When we wake up in the morning, examine how you wake up in the morning. What do you wake up to? What do, let's say it this way, what do we wake up to? And I'm talking to this audience as well as those on the internet. What do we wake up to? And even myself, I ask myself, what do I wake up? There's times that I wake up and I go, oh my God, I'm running late. Get the coffee going and I'm out the door. Oh, oh, back up. And let me wake up to get the word. You know, a couple minutes in the word, just the scripture in the word and something so good in the word. So, do you see the decline in our life, in our generation? Now, think about the generation that's coming. Unless something dramatic happens in the church, which I'm praying that revival will take place in the church. I'm praying for an awakening. I'm believing that people can come down the road and they're driving. Maybe they're upset, arguing with their husband and wife or with their boss. And as they drive down this road, the anointing is so strong in this house that they sense the anointing of God that somehow they're just driven to this house. And when they enter into the house, they just feel like crying before the Lord and repenting. That's possible, ladies and gentlemen. That's possible. You can see the anointing attracts, the anointing pulls, the anointing draws in when we, when, we, when we put ourselves in that position, right? So in other words, we find out, it says here, verse 12, for the perfected of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Oh my God, we have missed it there. The work of the ministry. We're all called for the work of the ministry, ladies and gentlemen. We're all called for the work of the ministry. Listen, tell your neighbor, you are. You're called for the work of the ministry. And if we're not busy doing the work of the ministry, boy, we're missing being the mature church. We're busy being the perfect church if we're not doing the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? You know what the work of the ministry simply is? And I know I'm probably driving Jeff upside down. I'm moving back and forth. Uh, hey, man, the work of the ministry is this, bringing people to reconcile themselves back to God. Think how many people that were once serving the Lord. Uh, neighbors might have been serving the Lord and Maybe family might, you know, I, I have family that was once serving the Lord on fire for God and somehow things happen along the way and my goodness, uh, you know, it's a sad thing. So that's what our job is, is to reconcile them back. How do we reconcile them back? By the open book that we are. We are an open book. We have the gospel. We have the word of God. We have the anointing. We can tell people. We become mature in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we, we have to realize that the church, the church's purpose is so that you can build up the house of God. We're to build up the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so by us building up the house of God, there's so much more involved there. Building up the house of God. We're to edify one another we're to become the fullness of christ to be more like him think about it we become more like him oh jesus think about it when, when you get up in the morning the uh, the enemy knows who you are uh, you pray before the lord and you call things in you b let your bees uh, your your bees become your 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 calling things in your bees not as they are you're speaking the word of god you're driving out devils you're taking the authority and god is using you that day hallelujah amen christine made a good point this morning she says you remember a macarthur and a hundred and 12th used to be, uh, it was uh, right around that area would be 
accident alley, people were always having accidents. People were just, bam, having accidents. And one day you drove by there and you said, Father, I take authority over this corner and we will not have any more accidents, no more accidents in this area. She said, do you, we drove by it this morning, do you know there hasn't been an accident since? I said, that's right. She said, we took our authority. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Take your authority. Hallelujah. Amen. When you find, see, that's being the fullness of God out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't put up with shootings. Don't put up with crime. Don't put up. Oh, come on, church. In Chicago, Illinois, there was a group of elderly ladies that just got tired of people selling drugs in the corner. They went to church and the pastor said, here, you take this anointing oil and you go pour it out in the streets. You go pour it on your neighborhood. Just pour it out there. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it right now. Hallelujah. Do it right now. She, they did it. All these elderly ladies did it. <laughs> Them drug dealers could not sell drugs on them corners. They couldn't sell it. They felt convicted. They couldn't. They, no one was buying. They just moved out. And the, the, the elderly ladies came to church, told the pastor, he said, see, it works. It works. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say it works? It works. That's who we are, the church. Amen. Let's look at Matthew now. Matthew, the, the 16th chapter. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, we're no, I'm not going to be hurry with this, with this this uh, series, what I mean is, is I'm going to continue going on. We're just going to keep it going, right? Matthew, the 16th chapter. Not that I'm going to be here all day. I mean, you know, I'm talking about in other services, right? Matthew, the 16th chapter. Notice what it says here. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. My pastor back, uh, he's in heaven now, but he would always uh, read this, and all our children know this by heart, right? Uh, the Bible says in Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse... Uh, uh, Verse, uh, let's look at verse 15. And, he's, and he, Jesus, said unto them, but whom say you that I am? Whom say you that I am? Jesus said that. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you that, to thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Point number one, who do people say that I am? Who do people say that Jesus is? Who do you say that Jesus is? Remember how we open it? He is the. He is the Christ. And so once we recognize that we come to church because he is the builder. He's the one that is the Christ. He says, I'm going to build my church. Now think about it. I used to look at that and says, now, now, how is he going to build his church? I used to think the church was a physical thing, but the church is a spiritual thing, composed of spiritual beings in a spiritual house. He deemed the head, which is spiritual. We are his body, which are spiritual. Think about it. We've come into this physical building, which is a is a leadership building we've come into it but we turned it spiritual because in this spiritual room are the spiritual people of god hallelujah amen and god is here let's think about it jesus is in this building right now he may be sitting right there jim uh, jamie oh he may be right next to you he may be looking at what you text Hallelujah. Amen. If you're texting. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, come on, church. He, he may be looking at you surfing this morning. Not that you're surfing, but I'm talking for those that are out there surfing the internet, right? Think about it. He's in this house. Why? Because he is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So what do you believe, church? What do you believe? When people say, why do you go to church? Oh, because I'm just a faith person. I'm a non-denominational person. No, no, no. I go to church because I go spend time with the Lord. See, see, we spend time together with the Lord in the house of God. You see what I'm saying? And God loves it when his children come together. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday I had my children come together to swim. And oh, it was so beautiful to see them. Although it was hot, I was out there looking at them swimming. Oh, it was so nice. But think about how God feels about you today in the house of God. Honoring his son, the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you get favor from the Lord when you honor his son. You get favor in the Lord when you stand for what is right. God will give you favor. God will give you honor. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, listen, he told Peter, Peter, look at that again. He said, Peter, uh, he said, who do men say that you are? And, and he said, uh, blessed, uh, he says, uh, Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, 
The Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon and Barjom, and flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. See, the revealing of revelation, I get a hold of this, the revealing of revelation, which is revelation, and revelation is the promises of God for you. Now think about it. When you say, man, I never saw that. Well, it's been there for centuries. You just never got revelation of that. Now think about it. Today, God is giving us revelation of who he is. And we're understanding more of who he is. Amen. So now he becomes our revealer. He reveals to us things that we might have understood. See, you might have been going to church simply because it was a thing to do. You've been raised that way. It's been a custom. And I'm great for that custom that you got. It's a good thing. But listen, let's focus on the reason why we're here. We're here because now we're lifting up the Lord, not a pastor, but the pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God that he made me a pastor, but I'm not the pastor. He is the pastor. Hallelujah. And when we come to the house, his house, it is awesome, right? Tell your neighbor he's awesome, right? He's awesome, right? Now notice this. He said, and in verse, verse says 18, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Look at that word Peter. The Amplify says, and I tell you, you are Peter, Greek Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, he says, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. He says, upon this rock, which is a huge rock, like Gibraltar, I will build my church and the gates of hell. Listen, the powers of the infernal region shall not empower it, overpower it, or be strong to its determination or hold out against it. Now notice this. What is Petra? What is, what is Petra? A huge rock. Look at it like this. A huge slab that is unmovable. Now, Peter is a movable rock, a little rock, just a little Petros, a Petros which is a little rock. Do you know, uh, God never intended for a denomination to be over a certain thing, Right? He intended a denomination or an, inter and an interdenomination or a non-denominational church or anything to be based on one or be founded on one rock, which is the massive rock, which is a solid rock. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So in other words, Peter could, he could have fell any time. And he did. He did fall many times. Peter was the one that always put his foot in his mouth. But the thing about Jesus, he knew that it would not stand on Peter. The church could not stand on this man. The church cannot stand on your pastor. The church cannot stand on you. The only way the church is going to stand is on the massive rock, which is Petros, which is a Gibraltar-like. It is a solid rock, unmovable. In other words, Jesus says, listen, I'm building my church upon a massive rock, and it's not going to move. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when I went on a vacation this last month, I went to get some R&R rest, and we had some great things. We went to Branson, and I encourage you, man, you got to go see that show, uh, the, uh, what was it called, Jennifer? Jonah. I'm telling you, that's a production. And in fact, I tweeted Jonah on Instagram, and the, the one that played Jonah, he tweeted back. He says, I hope you, I, he answered me, I hope you enjoyed and I said, oh, my God, I got a revelation. I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you something. I was there, and the Lord spoke to me through this presentation. Right? And then when we came back to pray, that's when he told me about the church. And I put two and two together, and it was amazing. Listen, Jonah never cried for his city. Jonah never cried. Jesus told him, go cry for your city. Go cry for it. He never did. Until finally he wanted to commit suicide. Jesus saved him. The Lord saved him, right? Threw him back on the on a land and he went back to where he was supposed to be the first time. Right? The thing about Nineveh, we have to understand something. It was wicked. It was cruel. And the Lord said this. He says, you need to cry for your city. Oh, God, I haven't cried for my city. Oh, we haven't cried for our city. And then he says, I don't think the church knows that I am the church. Or I am the church. I am the rock, right? Now think about it. That means when I was in Branson, I was trying to build this church, Jamie. 
I get a hold of this. I was trying to build this church. I was trying to build it. Oh, it's so hard. It's, it, it, you know what I'm talking about? We, we, just, we just celebrated our anniversary. And I was trying to build it, trying to build it, trying to build it. Trying, and the Lord says, wait, 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 wait. I'm supposed to build it. You're not strong to build it. You can't build that. I'm the one that has to build it. You get people focused on who I am, and I'll build it. Oh, yeah, that's easy. I can do that. I can do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Get focused on Jesus, uh, Daddy. Get focused on Jesus, Sinji. Come on. I, I kid with them, right? Get focused on them, Jimmy. Hallelujah. Amen. JV. We got a lot of J's in this church. Jennifer, Jason, Jeff. Hallelujah. Amen. Get focused on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Because, see, he's building the church, but he needs you. See, he's going to set the foundation. He's going to set the principles. He's going to set the word, but he needs you to carry it out. He needs you to carry it out. He needs you to get up on Sunday morning. Ooh, Jesus, Pastor Christine said it very well. That we, you know, th this is the day the Lord has made that I will rejoice, right? This is the day. This is the day I will rise up out of faith. Listen, it takes faith going to church. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. I want you to realize that when you get up in the morning, you're going to the house of God, and it is the Lord that's going to speak to us. Not, the, not a pastor, not a worshiper, not a drummer or a saxophone player, although they can do great, hallelujah, but it is the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the rock. Hallelujah. Amen. So the church is important to Jesus Christ. It has interest. Amen. Uh, he is very interested in building this church. The church. Do you know the church is going to be ruling people? The church is going to be ruling government? The church is going to be ruling nations? The church is going to be ruling... Uh, 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 oh my God, if you, can, if you can think about it. The church is going to rule. Now, I know that I may go too fast in some things, but listen, in the great millennial time, the church is going to be ruling now, I don't know if you don't think about that, but you have to think about your future. When Jesus Christ comes, gather the church, hallelujah, amen. Listen, we're not in heaven forever. We're just in heaven for a short time. Seven years is nothing. Seven years is we goes by real fast. But in those seven years on earth, something's going to happen. A lot of things going to happen here on earth. And you don't want to be caught here on earth when the church is gone, right? When the church is gone, listen, it's going to be a sad thing. The earth is going to be very sad. That's why we're making videos and DVDs and, and archives. And when people stay, they're going to see these, uh, these archives. But we really don't want people to stay, right? But it's real. But what happens when the church comes back? Oh, Jesus, when you and I come back to this earth, oh, my God, you don't realize that nations are going to be ruled by the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, people are going to be serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Why do you think the devil fights the church today? Why do you think the devil fights us from coming to church. Why do you think the devil's always interfering? Listen, it's not you or it's not God that's telling you to stay home. It's the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. I, hate, I hear people say, well, the, the Lord told me to stay home from church today. And you're a member of the body of Christ? Shame on you. Hallelujah. Amen. God never does anything like that. I never heard him do that. Unless your church is full of them demon people. Now notice, come on church, let's get real. Really, really, let's get real, real, real. Come on. Say, I love the Lord. And I love our pastor. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. But let me just say, let me just make it easy for us. Make it easy for us. Whenever you don't want to pray, it's never the Lord. Whenever you don't want to worship, it's never the Lord. Has the Lord ever told you, don't you worship me? Right now. Have you ever heard the Lord say that? Have you ever heard the Lord say, oh, come on, pray right now, pray right now. Yeah? He'll never say, oh, don't, don't pray right now, don't pray right now, don't pray right now. No, no, see, see, if we can overcome those voices that are speaking to us about the things of God, then you become mature. Come on, church, really. It, it's so serious. You know what I'm talking about? You, you know, uh, there's times where you can be watching television. There's nothing wrong with watching television unless it's a good movie. You know what I'm saying? Not a bad movie. I encourage you. Listen to this. Well, you, don't, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's amazing how the Holy Spirit can come at that very moment and says, I need you to pray. Woo, Jesus. Get that remote control turned off and go to your inner chambers and pray. 
I'm telling you what, you'll find out that you'll get more prosperous. You'll be blessed by hearing the word of the Lord than, going to the, than, than ignoring the word of the Lord. Now, how many people can do that? How many of you can do that? How many of you are sensitive to the wording of the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, church. Are we sensitive to the working of the Lord? Amen. Say with me, I am. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this. Do you know the devil? Now listen to this. The devil fears the church. Oh, church, listen to this. The devil fears the church. He is terrified. He is overwhelmed with panic at the thought of the church on earth. The devil is scared at the workings of the church. I'll give you a good example. Went to visit Miss Lovelace. All right? We, we rolled Miss Lovelace out. So she's getting medical attention. And she wants really off medicine. So she's, for her to come off medicine, is, you know, we know God can deliver her. But she's, she's just believing God day by day by faith, right? And she's, she's now walking. I remember wheeling her out. And uh, the waiting room... I wanted to spend some quality time with her in the waiting room to pray with her. Because in the hallway, it seemed like everybody hangs, hangs out in the hallway. Did anybody in school ever hang out in the hallway? It's amazing. Elderly people, they love the hallway too, right? They were just in the hallway hanging out. I, it reminded me of school, right? So I took Miss Lovelace, I willed her, and I told one of the nurses, I says, ma'am, I said, ma'am, is this okay to put, uh, that I can talk? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So I locked Miss Lovelace there, and we started talking, and and the moment I said, Miss Love, let's pray. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's just pray. I'm telling you, the place went crazy. I'm talking about people started having attacks. It was quiet before. Christine looked at me, and I know what she thought. She said, well, should we run? I said, no, no. Just point and break that spirit now. We said, Father, Miss Love, I said, excuse me, Miss Love, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind this work right now. Cease now. It stopped. So we went back to Miss Lovelace, started praying. And then the nurse decided to turn on the television. The television was never on before, but this time the volume was loud. Now, it wasn't the individual. It was a demonic activity trying to hinder the breakings of God, trying to hinder the breakthrough. And so at that very moment, I looked at the nurse. She got my attention. I got her done. Turned it down. Do you notice that? That would have never happened if we were not praying. If I would have said, bring out the, uh, the uh, chess, let's bring out some cards and play cards, that would have never happened. Let's bring out the hot dogs, that would have never happened. Miss Lovelace, bring out the dominoes, amen, the jacks, whatever, whatever you, marbles, whatever you want to play. Let's bring them out. Let's bring out the Chinese checkers, whatever it may be. That would have not happened. But why did it happen? Because the Lord came into this place and the Lord took his authority, and the demons hated that. So the devil is scared. I want you to understand this. The devil is scared of you. I'm telling you, I have assurance, knowing without a shadow of doubt, the enemy bows and trembles when the church wakes up in the morning. Hallelujah. Can I say it again? The devil is scared of the church. He is terrified. He has panic attacks. He's overwhelmed. He has thoughts of, of panic every time he thinks about the church and what the church can do on earth. Now do you know why the enemy is trying to shut down the church? If the church is shut down, the louder the voice the enemy gets. It proves it, proves it. Are you with me? Are you with me? The more the church is silent, the louder is the voice of, of Antichrist come on the scene. The moment the church starts hiding itself from who they are, the louder the, the, major, the minority of all the mess that's out there comes up. You know what I'm talking about? Isn't it amazing? There, it's only a few little things out there that hinder our country. Where's the Christians? Where's the Christians? Come on, church. Where is the Christians? Where is the body of Christ standing up today? Because they don't know the Lord. They don't know that he is the Lord. They don't realize that they're important. You know what, you know what the average Christian says? What for? They're going to speak louder than me anyway. That person doesn't know who they are. Because when you have the Lord on your side, you speak loud. You speak with authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. We got to believe God. Whenever you see these rainbow flags going up everywhere, you may say, oh, it's so pretty, the rainbow, the rainbow. No, there's an agenda behind that. 
There's agenda behind that. You speak and say, Father, I break down this perversion now in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Drive to the capital. Get your family. Drive to the capital, the steps of our capital. Show your children the capital. Say, now, children, let's face the north. You face the north. I face the west. You face the south. And let's proclaim victory over city, Oklahoma City. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Can we do that? Come on, church. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. See, these are people that know who they are. I'm telling you, I remember one time we were getting out. This is in Houston. There was a palm reader that just moved in the neighborhood, and she set up a palm reader's house out there, and, and she was drumming in business, and you can't get anything past Pastor Christine. She said, Father, I command that thing to be burned down now in Jesus' name and save those people as it's burning down. Now, I, I said, oh, Jesus, get ready for our department. The next Sunday, we drove to church, and the place was burnt down. Can you say amen? You see what I'm saying? The power of a woman knowing who she is when she talks and prays. Holly. Come on, church. Don't be afraid. You got those people doing that stuff out there. You stand and speak to it. This dark stuff, you speak to it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can see that is the church. That is the church. Let's look at Ephesians. Go with me to Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians, right? Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Now, this is where the enemy has the church. I know this because I used to work for a large denomination. I was, I, was, I was hired to come help this denomination. I was non-denominational, word of faith. They hired me to come help this denomination in certain areas. And while I was in this denomination for four years, I found out a lot that I never knew about denominations. I found out a lot. I know they have rules. I know they have government. I know that thing. But somehow people somehow tend to lead their trust on a man rather than God. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus comes in the house, man, we bow. Amen. When a man comes to the house, praise God, we just welcome. Amen. I'm glad you came to the house. But never do we bow to someone, right? We bow to the Lord. Amen, huh? Unless you need to repent to someone, you bow. Amen. Say, please forgive me. Amen. All right. Notice what it says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. Amen. Fourth chapter, picking up in verse 1, therefore. Ephesians 4, verse 1. Therefore... The prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocabulary, vocabulary, that you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one, one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called into one hope of your calling. Now notice this. I underlined verse 1. Do you see where it says you are called? Beseech you to walk worthy of your vocation wherewith you are called. Underline that if you would. If you have a, a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, then highlight it on your iPad. You are called. Verse 2. Ver, verse, verse, uh, verse 2 says, With lowness and meekness, long-suffering, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. Therefore is one body, one spirit, even as, again, you are called in one hope of your calling. Understand, underline that word your calling or call. You see that? Do you see that? Everybody see that? Can you tell me? Can you help me out, people? Do you see that? Does your Bible say that? Now notice this. There's, there, there, that word is you've been called. You're called. Now, now, we have to realize that what he's talking about here is we have to get over our pettiness. We've got to get over our problems. Now, there's a lot of problems because you don't come to my church that I'm not of yours. Oh, see, they all miss it. Well, he says, you're not coming to, to my denomination. We can't go to your service. Uh, you, you see how, how ridiculous, are y'all with me? Isn't it ridiculous? I mean, uh, you know, you, you can invite someone to church. Well, what church do you go to? Well, we're a non-denominational word of faith. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I'm Lutheran. What does that have to do with inviting you to church? <laughs> have you ever noticed that? I like for you to come to our church. We have a great time. Well, what church do you go to? Well, we, go, we have a little church. We're meeting in the building. Oh, I, I can't go there. Pastor doesn't want me to go there. What does that have to do with the call? Now, if this person w knew who he was, then that person would say, you know what? I, I appreciate you inviting me to church, but I have an awesome church too. And, and listen, I, I, you know, I can't go because that's my service time. I go to my church, but praise God, it's a good thing you're going to church. That's a good thing. But I hear people putting up that denominational wall or that card. It's an awful thing, right? They tell me, you know, how many people know I'm Hispanic? I'm Hispanic, brother. People thought I was a, a, a Filipino in California. People thought I was Native American when I first came to Oklahoma City, right? But listen to this. I met a couple at, uh, at a conference, and that's why uh, 
It's a no-no when people tell you, well, how many members you got in your church? Oh, that just turns me off. Hey, my name is Pastor So-and-so. How many members you got in your church? What difference does it make how many members I got? <laughs> Amen. I'm a pastor of the church, of a church. Jesus loves my church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so we have to understand something is this, is this, there are differences out there. People that keep you apart from, they don't know who they are. We are members of the church, which he is the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, so we realize that all these things, he says, endeavoring to keep the peace, be at peace with your neighbor, even if he doesn't like your, your church. Be at peace with that person. Walk in love and endeavoring to keep the spirit of the bond of peace as a body believer. But he also said something. There is one body, verse 4. There is one spirit, even as you are called to one hope of your calling. Now, I looked at that word calling. You know what that means? Ecclesia. Calling means the called out ones. Now, now listen to this. Ecclesia means I'm a called out one. Called out from what? I've been called out from the spirit of darkness into the marvelous light of the, of the glories of Jesus Christ. Right? Now, therefore, I'm called. Now, wait a minute. Now, don't forget this now. You're called. You are called into the church. You are called into the body. Well, who calls you, pastor? Do you call me? No, 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 no. I don't call you. I'm just glad you came. And every now and then I'll call you and send a text. I encourage you to go to church. How do people like that when your pastor sends you a text? Do you really like that, guys? I feel bad every time I do that, but, you know, it's amazing, right? Text is amazing, right? So whenever I send you a text, it's because you've been missing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now notice this. Notice this. Now, the called ones. God has called us. That means he's got something for you to do. Oh, my God. When you start thinking about God called me to the church, God called me to the worship of the Lord, God called me to be part of this church, which is part of the church, he's got a job for me to do. I'm the called. Say with me, I'm the called. I'm the called. I'm the called. Tell your neighbor, I'm the called. Where you been, neighbor? I'm the called. Well, who called you? Pastor? No. Jesus, let's work on this right now. Who called you? Jesus. Say it again. I'm the called. I'm called. I'm called. I'm called. Who called you? Jesus. You see, you see why we're called to the church, the house of God? We're called. See, I like this, that if he called me, then he's got a purpose for me. In the church. Man, when we start looking at the purpose of God, the purpose of God, he's called me, right? Now notice this. The, the, if we look at what is the church, we said ecclesia. A called out together, right? But notice this. Notice this. A gathering assembly, a called out ones for a purpose. And I love this. Citizens from home to a public place citizens from home to a public place. Now, let's look at it for a moment. I got revelation of something. Now, get a hold of this. If I'm called out from God, called to the church, God has a plan for me, right? Yes, he does. Now, notice this. We're citizens called out from our homes to a church. Now, I want you to see the citizens... Where, where is your citizenship? Did you say Texas? No. Where's your citizenship? United States? No. Where's your citizenship? All together, everybody. Are y'all sure about that? Where is your citizenship? Heaven. We're only coming through here. We're not here forever. That means if, if oh, oh, I, I'm telling you, I shouted when I got revelation of this. I shouted my front lawn. My neighbors all went crazy. Listen to this. If I'm a citizen from heaven coming out of my home to a public place of worship, that means I'm among the citizens of heaven. 
Come on, church, among the citizens of heaven. Now, think about it. While you're waiting to go home, which not too long ago we had people leave, leave the home. Had a friend of ours leave yesterday, uh, a, a wonderful giver that gave to a lot of our work in Mexico. He went on home to be with the Lord. But you know what? He didn't leave us. He just went on home, right? He, they're having a homecoming today, a home going today, right? So he went on home. Man, I'm excited. Man, J.W. went to be with the Lord. Man, he beat us. J.W., man, he beat us. Praise God, he's at home. Oh, Jesus, do him the, whatever he does up there, amen? The dance, right? Now notice this. While J.W. was on earth, J.W. became a member of a earthly church that honored the things of God on earth. Church, if you think about it, where else will we worship the Lord? This is not our home. Did you know this is not our home? We're just walking through here. One day we're going to be with the Lord. Man, we're just pilgrims on this earth. Don't, don't, don't stay longer than you should. This is not your home. Amen. People say, well, my home is in Oklahoma. No, it's not. You just got a place there, a house there. But that's not your, your extended home. It's not. One day we're going to be in heaven with the Lord. I can't wait. Remember, church. Where are we meeting? The way Center Church? North On the north side of town. We, we, hey, man, I, I love that about Jesus. He goes, oh, this is north side. <laughs> hey, man. Now, notice this. That means while we're waiting for that, we have a place here on earth to worship the Lord. Ecclesia is a called out ones, a citizen from this home into a public place. We've come together to worship the Lord. Amen, church. That's why when I come to church and I see you in church, I get excited when you're in the house of God. Why? Because now God can speak to us through his word, through his pastor, through his ministry, speak to you the word of God. And guess what? It's a word from the Lord. Amen. Now, why do you think the enemy's fighting the church? Why do you think the enemy's, why do you think the church is declining, if I may say it in the statistical sense? And the interest. This morning, how many people did you see? Not going to church. I drive by a park all the time, and, I'm, and my faith is, hey, it's an early morning church, hey, amen. Pastor Christine said, yeah, we, we saw a car with some boat, a boat, uh, uh, what do you call these, kayaks on top going that way. And I said, honey, there goes one coming from church going to the lake. Hey, amen, I love that. Turn it around. Turn it around. He's coming from church going to the lake. Hey, amen. Before we say, man, see that? He could have been in church. He ought to be in church. Wait, 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 wait a minute. He might have had church at 11 o'clock, at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Amen. We have church at 11, right? I kind of miss early morning churches, you know that? What do you say if we start at 10 o'clock? Amen. 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 Ooh, I, but, but I love to, brother. I love to. Man, I'm here early. You ought to see me. I get up early just waiting. <sighs> Amen. Right, Katie? I was here before you. Amen. The reason why is because, listen, it ain't nothing like getting out from your house and going to the house of the Lord. I know I can worship at home, but it gets lonely worshiping by myself. I need other believers. I need other people that can encourage me. I need people that I can talk to and encourage me in faith. Amen. Jennifer, how do I get wealthy in Jesus? You should know, darling. Tell me. Live by faith. Amen. Katie, how do I, how do I get healed? By faith, right, in Jesus, right? Andrew. How do I become the head, not the tail? Amen. See, he encouraged me. He encouraged me. But if I go to my neighbor next door and tell him, how do I get, how do I get healed? So what do you need? What kind of medicine do you need? <laughs> Amen. Come on, church. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Go to my neighbor. Hey, hey, how, how do I live by faith? What? You crazy? See, at church, we need each other. It's the church, the called out ones. Amen. Let's look at another scripture, right? Go with me to Hebrews. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. All right. Come on, church. Oh, I can smell them beans back there. Amen. Praise God. And everybody said, there are no beans back there. <laughs> All right. Hebrews 10, chapter, verse 25. Are you with me, church? <clears throat> Let us hold fast. Look at verse <coughs> 25. Well, let's read verse 23, right? Hallelujah. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful. That promise, that word profession, is your confession of faith. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25, finishing it with verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
but exhort one another so much more as you see the day approaching. Let me read to you in the Amplified. Uh, the NLT says, And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the days of his return is drawn near. Let me read to you the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, NIV, the NIV. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to what it says in the NIV. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the days approaching, or the day approaching. Look at the Amplified. The Amplified says, not forsaken or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some, but admonishing them, warning them, urging them, encouraging them, one another, and, and the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Look at that word, the day approaching, the day. There is a day that's going to be the day. Can I tell you something? The day is coming soon. Now notice this, the day, if you study the Bible, the day of his return, it doesn't say that the days of his return or a day of his return, it talks about the, I want to add this to it, the great day of his return. That means, church, there is a day that's coming that at the batting of our eye, the twinkle of our eye, we're going to see Jesus. There is a day. And let's, let's, don't forget that. Do not forget that one day we're going to see the Lord. One day. Either if we... If he gathers us up or if you go before that, and I pray that he gathers you, not that you go before that time uh, through sickness or disease or whatever, right? So, so we know that the day's coming. Now think about it. If you study the day, the Bible says that to be, to be present with the Lord, to be present with the Lord is to be absent from the body. That means there is a day that he's gathering the body all together. And that day is going to be a glorious day. I'm telling you, it's going to be an awesome day. Do you know that uh, we don't have time to talk about death, but we, there's victory over death. You know that? You know, just like I put my jacket on, take my jacket off, that's the way your body is going to be one day. One day your spirit is just going to see your body there and say, what was that? <laughs> Amen. And you're going to be living with God. It's an awesome thing, right? But understand this, understand this. The day is coming that he will gather us. But we have to stay busy encouraging one another to be in the house of God. We've got to encourage one another. Listen, listen, it's okay to call people when they're not in church. It's okay. Do that, please. If you love that person and you really think about the eternity, call that person. If you haven't seen a person in church, then you have the responsibility to build up the body of Christ. Simply because Katie's been missing, do we ignore Katie? Amen. Then why isn't anybody asking about Katie? I'm just using it as a right? Why isn't, it, why isn't anybody thinking about Katie? Why isn't anybody saying, Pastor, where's Katie? Jamie was in... Wisconsin, three months, right? Fishing, right? Work, Work I know. Huh? I've, been, I've been to Wisconsin fishing. It's awesome, right? And I notice this, notice this. Did you get my text? Right? Pastor just kept bothering you, didn't he? <laughs> I miss you. I love you. I miss you. I love you. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you, right? You see, but did anybody ask for Jamie? You all looking at me like, it's okay to answer. It's okay. I think you asked, right? No, you didn't ask. You asked where your cookie was, right? Okay. Now, now, notice, notice. Let's, let's get real. Let's get real. Let's get real. That means we got to do our part to encourage one another in the house of God. Well, Pastor, that's your job. <laughs> that's not my job. My job is to go pray and study and get in the Word and hear the Lord, not to be so focused on where you've been. It's the job of the neighbor to do that. It's his job to do it. It's your job to do it. It's your job to do it. You get out there and call, hey, buddy, we haven't seen where you've been. Oh, come on, church. That's what the body of Christ should be doing one another, encouraging one another. Andrew, get up. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Put your dancing shoes on. Let's get excited about church. Hallelujah. Amen. Us guys went fishing. Man, it was awesome, right, guys? We had a fi we love we enjoy fishing, right? The beautiful thing I saw about fishing was I was the cook, 
And it's amazing how when they're hungry, they're waiting for the cook. <laughs> hey Amen. They're waiting for the coffee. They're waiting for the bacon. They're waiting for the eggs. And you know, Ro Bobby can be Bobby and Russ could be way out there in the lake and and Bo can say, the beans are on. Man, I can see Bobby. I can see Russell. Right? Oh man, that's amazing, right? The called ones should be running to the house of God. <laughs> Can you say amen? This is the Lord speaking, guys. This is the Lord speaking. We should be running to the house of God. We should be waiting till the doors are open. We should be ready to come in. You know what I'm talking about? Ready to come into the house of God because that's where we're going, to the house of the Lord, where the Lord is, where a, a pastor is, but where the pastor is. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Y'all get real quiet out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. We need to encourage one another in the Lord. Encourage one another in the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I I'm going to tell you something. And we're going to close right now, all right? Uh, go with me to Deuteronomy, the, 32, the 32nd chapter. We're going to close now. Pastor, why is it important that we all are in church? Well, it's, it, it, if you read the 32nd chapter, besides all that we've been saying this morning, there's power in numbers. Listen to me, this church. There's power in numbers. I hear people say, well, we're not into numbers. We're just we're into what the Spirit of the Lord has. That's true, but they don't realize the importance of what they're missing when they say we're not into numbers. What they're saying is they don't believe that numbers mean anything. Now, let's prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Look at Proverbs, uh, excuse me, De Deuteronomy. We're going to close it from here. Amen. And then we're going to continue this, this powerful teaching of, of the church. Amen. Jesus, we love you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. Uh, chapter 32, verse 30 says, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except the rock? had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. Now, notice what it says in the Good News Bible. Why were a thousand defeated by one and ten thousand by two? The Lord their God had abandoned them. Their mighty God had given them up. Now, look at it from the, from the, 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 the reverse here, right? Remember, one came in to attack one thousand. One. That means one overpowered one thousand. Now get a hold of this. Two overpowered 10,000. Now think about it. I don't know about you, but try to do the math. You're good with math, right? If one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000. What can three do? Come on, people. 100,000. What can four do? What? A million. What can five do? Woo! Come on, church. Do you see the mathematics? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's go back to mathematics school. One plus one isn't two, according to the things of God. Two plus two isn't four, according to the things of God. If one can put a thousand to fly, fly, think about why the demons are scared when there are one in church, two in church, three in church, four in church, five in church, six in church, seven in church, eight in church. Oh, my God. Think about, think about in this room right now, there's 20-something people. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Devils are scared that they're get, you're getting the word. Oh, they're more. You just say, get out. Take your authority. Do you see why numbers are important to Jesus? Now, let's go beyond that. Why does Jesus need numbers? Because he needs you to rule. Why does Jesus need numbers? He needs you to rule. He needs you to take your authority. He needs you to walk into this hospital and, and pronounce and declare and tell the devils to leave, folks. He wants you to take your authority. You see, let's look at it again. Where, why were a thousand defeated by one and ten thousand by only two? The Lord your God had abandoned them. Their mighty God had given them up. So in other words, if you look at this with God, wow. Do you see the importance of numbers, church? Numbers? Now, I want you to think about this. Think about what prayer can do when we come together as one mighty people in church. Think about what we can do when we worship together in church. 
Oh, do you see this, church? Think about what, what happens when we agree in church. You want to go further? Think about what you can do when you give to church. There's so much in it. Amen. Well, you know, one person said, I'm so tired of what's happening in this nation. I'm so tired of what's happening in this nation. And you know what the Lord told the person that he was talking to? He said, why don't you just buy the nation? And that other person said, wait a minute, that's not, that's not possible. Why, why isn't it possible? Can I, can I, can I, can I ask you to do some, some, some thinking with me? If we gather all the Christians in Oklahoma City, all the wolves that love the Lord, that are really loving the Lord, that really worship the Lord, that worship the Lord and know who they are, get them all together and let's get together in some huge place, uh, maybe outdoors in some huge area, get all of them. How many, how many inhabitants, how, what's the population of Oklahoma City? Almost what, 900,000, right? We were at 500, we moved in, I know it's 900,000 now, right? Now think about it. You get a percentage of Christians coming together and speaking the same thing. Man, think about the power that we would have in this city. Think about if each one's gay for a cause. Let's say we wanted to root out the, the disease of, of, of lack and poverty in this city. Think about what we can do. You give them and then you teach them. You give them and teach them. Think about if we can fill up arenas with people that are poor and literally help them and then teach them the word of God. Do you see this church? Let's rent the Cox Center, okay, Jamie? Let's rent the Cox Center and let's order just a bunch of backpacks and tennis shoes for kids and basketball and let's fill up the room and let's, let's tell it on every news media that the Christians in Oklahoma City are doing this. I'm telling you, you're going to have people out of every every area to come get their tennis shoes. But the gospel is going to preach before they're given them the gospel, before they're given the basketball. Think about the gospel is going to be preached. Hallelujah. Amen. And you tell them, how many of you would like to receive Jesus Christ? Listen, a percentage of them will come to know the Lord. Now, did the church do something in the city? They did. Right? You know, when, uh, when, when we had this, uh, this earthquake in, in, uh, this country, uh, it was it was a bad. It was a well. No, what was it? It was an earthquake. It was in Haiti. Remember that earthquake in Haiti? We had, that was bad. It was bad, right? We were in a meeting, uh, and uh, the only plane that they allowed to enter this country was the group of pastors that we were associated with. Now, this pilot came after the storm was over. They, we wanted to ask the pilot, what was it that allowed you to enter before any other plane? We, the church beat the government. The church was literally, their boots were on the ground before the government was there. But I realized something. The pilot spoke to us. The person that or organized this huge plane to go in there said it was simple. We agreed and asked God to open the door and let us be the one that could go in there. And they opened up the runway. As soon as the runway was ready, they allowed us to go in there. And we immediately, there was nobody on the ground. Now let me take it further. Ships were already coming. And there was not a ship that landed port yet because they had to go through all the red tapes and all the mess and all the red tapes and all that. But do you know, this plane that went in there gave an identification to a ship that was coming and they allowed the ship to come simply because this plane came in first. This ship came in. And I said, oh, what do, can God do? Hallelujah. Amen. Now don't tell me the church can't do anything. When the church prays, the church can do anything. When the church agrees, the church can do anything, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. When the church agrees and comes together. Amen. Wow, what can we do? Numbers is important.